there's absurd, there's delusional, and then there's post-war American optimism. This wasn't just a brief period of economic recovery. It was an era when people seriously believed that atomic power would be the cure for absolutely everything. Cities would glow with radioactive progress. Planes would fly forever. Coffee would taste better because the mugs were irradiated. And then there was the Ford Nucleon. A concept car so bloody mad it makes the Pontiac Aztec look like an engineering thesis. But for all of its lunacy, the Nucleon accidentally told us more about the future of nuclear energy than anyone could have predicted in 1957. You see, the idea was deceptively simple. Ford, in its infinite and slightly irradiated wisdom, thought, what if a car didn't need petrol? What if it had a miniature nuclear reactor instead? After all, the Americans had just finished building enough fission bombs to end all life twice over. So why not see if the same technology could also get you from Detroit to Vegas without stopping for fuel? And so came the Ford Nucleon, a sleek, low-slung concept. It didn't have an engine in the front because that space was reserved for squinty headlights and a gaping grill that seemed better suited for slipping up highway tumbleweeds. No, all the fun was crammed into the back, where instead of a boot, there was a slot designated for what Ford euphemistically called a power capsule. In reality, that capsule was a proposed nuclear reactor. Yes, you heard that right. Ford wanted to install an actual nuclear reactor into a road-going vehicle. The entire car was designed around the assumption that one day atomic fission would be so safe, so compact and so reliable that it could be strapped to a lightweight frame and left in the hands of whatever Marlboro smoking cowboy had a valid driver's license. Now obviously, the Nucleon never ran, um, there was no reactor, there wasn't even an engine. In fact, the prototype was a non-functional model, less of a car and more of a rolling theory, in blind optimism. But the premise was built on the belief that by the 1980s, small-scale reactors would be as common as a carburetor. Ford's team imagined a world where fuel stations were replaced with nuclear exchange depots. Your old depleted uranium capsule would be swapped for a fresh one and you'd go off another 5,000 miles of atomic motoring, all in total silence. Of course, there were a few, shall we say, technical hurdles. You see, a conventional nuclear power plant operates on a scale roughly comparable to a football stadium. It needs shielding, turbines, coolant systems and enough concrete to flatten a city block. The Nucleon would have had to shrink all that into a space smaller than a dishwasher. Somehow they envisioned this magic capsule generating enough electricity to power an electric drivetrain, likely through a turbine generator configuration, all while weighing less than your average small block V8. No cooling towers, no containment domes, just a glowing green box behind your headrest and a prayer that when somebody rear ends you, you don't flatten a city. But the laughable part is how close they were on the science. Eventually, today we have small modular reactors that can fit on a flatbed truck and power entire towns. The Westinghouse EVNC, for example, generates 5 megawatts and it fits into something the size of a shipping container. The Radiant Calendos is even smaller, allegedly compact enough to roll into a medium-sized garage. They're not inside cars just yet, but they could power entire EV charging stations for years without maintenance. So in a roundabout way, Ford's designers went completely wrong. They were just half a century early and wrong about where the power would go. But back in the 50s, the practical application of such a vehicle was nowhere near feasible. But the idea didn't spring from nowhere. At the time, the US military was actively exploring nuclear propulsion for aircraft under the Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion Program. There were plans to launch intercontinental bombers powered by reactors, which would loiter indefinitely over Soviet airspace like radioactive vultures. Those never flew either, but the mere existence of the program lent a sliver of credibility to Ford's public relations stunt. And that's what it ultimately was, a stunt. The car was dreamt up by designer Jim Powers under the direction of Ford's styling wizard George Walker. 
Powers, a fresh-faced art center graduate, was tasked with producing a visual for what the future might look like. He took cues from Ford's existing cars, blending lines from the Fairlane, Thunderbird, and even the Unitarian Ranchero to craft something that looked more Buck Rogers than Route 66. The wheelbase was absurdly short, at least in 70 inches, but it didn't matter. No one was going to drive it anyway. The real purpose of the Nucleon was to show the world that Ford wasn't just building cars, it was imagining futures. It was science fiction on wheels. Just like General Motors had its Motorama and Chrysler had its turbine cars, Ford needed a concept that screamed tomorrow. At the time when Americans believed the future was something they could build with a slide rule and a can-do attitude. Ironically, the Nucleon's most enduring legacy wasn't in Detroit, but in pop culture. It became the blueprint for every cartoonish atomic car you've ever seen, from the Jetsons to Fallout. If you've ever wandered through a post-apocalyptic video game and seen a half-sunken glowing sedan with fins and a uranium logo, you're looking at the spiritual descendant of the Nucleon. So Ford's absurd gamble gave us an entire visual language for what a nuclear-powered car should look like, even if it was never remotely safe or realistic. In hindsight, the concept is absurdly dangerous. Even if someone did build a micro-reactor capable of propelling a car, the risks would be catastrophic. A rear-end collision in traffic could become a level 7 nuclear incident. Ford would have had to include a Geiger counter with every owner's manual and possibly a warning in case of fire, evacuate the city. So, what does all of this mean today? Well, small modular reactors are real, they are here, and they're not that far from practical use. But instead of being crammed into something with white wall tires and tail fins, they're being used to power mining operations, remote military bases, and most ironically of all, the charging infrastructure for electric cars. In essence, Ford was right about the power source and dead wrong about where it would go. The Nucleon never rolled off the line, but its prophecy is quietly coming true not under the bonnet, but beneath the pavement of your nearest EV supercharger. Now the car itself lives in a museum, a static model preserved more for its design exuberance than its engineering. But it represents a time when automakers weren't afraid to dream big, he dared to imagine a world where petrol stations were swapped for nuclear depots, where the range anxiety of EVs was replaced by the existential terror of gamma radiation, and yet in its folly, it helped pave the path for a power source that might just help the world from its power crises. But at the end of this video, please let me know what you guys thought of the video and what do you guys think of this crazy concept from Ford. I think it is really cool. I, I don't have an issue with nuclear power. I think it is, when done right, it can be used really effectively and I do think it is better for the planet in general. Um, the waste that comes after, that's a different story, but we can send it into space or something. We'll make a plan, but um, putting it in a car, that's a bit silly in my opinion. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys did like this video, you'll most probably enjoy most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's someone to like, I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.